The adrenal gland is located just above the kidney. And so for that reason, it's also referred to as the supra renal glands. Now the endocrine, or this specific gland, the adrenal gland has two functionally different regions. So it's almost like it has two glands in one. The outer region is called the adrenal cortex and it's made up of three specific layers all having a different function. And the adrenal medulla is going to be the innermost layer. And it is a um, part of the sympathetic nervous system. So as far as the fight or flight part of the body. For example, if there's a tumor, um, a problem with the suprarenal medulla of the adrenal gland, it could cause hypertension because it's the sympathetic nervous system. So our next slide now looks a little more closely just at the adrenal cortex. So this area of the adrenal gland, it produces over 24 different hormones and collectively those are called corticosteroids because of where they're from. The beginning of the word looks like cortex. And the three different layers are called the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis from outer to innermost. And the glomerulosa specifically, it's going to produce a group of hormones that are referred to as the mineral corticoids. The zona fasciculata produces a group of hormones called the glucocorticoids. And finally, the innermost layer, the zona reticularis, produces the gonadocorticoids. So the image of this is what we see here. On the left in letter A, you can see a uh, diagram of what the adrenal cortex looks like. And on the right, a phyto photo micrograph of the adrenal cortex. So let's look a little more closely. So again, beginning on the outside is the zona glomerulosa. The next one is the zona fasciculata and then zona reticularis. And the very inside of the adrenal gland is the adrenal medulla. So the outer layer, the zona glomerulosa, produces mineral corticoids. And the major mineral corticoid is aldosterone, which causes reabsorption of sodium. The next layer, the zona fasciculata, produces glucocorticoids. And the major glucocorticoid is cortisol. And then the zona reticularis, it produces androgens. Then for the adrenal medulla, which is part of the sympathetic nervous system, produces these catecholamines, which are called epinephrine and norepinephrine. And that's the fight or flight response of the body. So in that case, if they're activated, epinephrine and norepinephrine are released into the bloodstream. So the outer layer now of the adrenal cortex produces these mineral corticoids. And again, the major mineral corticoid is aldosterone. And it causes the reabsorption of sodium. So to in, it would increase blood volume and increase blood pressure. We know that the more sodium one has in their blood, the higher their blood pressure is. So the adrenal cortex works via the traditional hormonal stimuli. Corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, is released from the hypothalamus, triggers the anterior pituitary gland to secrete ACTH, and then ACTH is what is going to stimulate the adrenal cortex to release one of these hormones. So since sodium is so very important, there's other factors then that are also going to cause aldosterone to be released. There's the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism, the plasma concentration levels of potassium because potassium is inversely related to sodium, ACTH, and another hormone called atrial natriuretic peptide, which we'll look at on the next slide. So continuing with the outer layer, the glomerulosa, the mineral corticoids, um, the aldosterone can also be activated by decreased blood pressure to cause aldosterone release. And 
the same with plasma concentration of potassium. And then finally, the one hormone which antagonizes it is atrial natriuretic peptide, ANP. So there's several different hormones here that affect blood pressure. Most of them increase blood pressure, and those would include aldosterone because it reabsorbs sodium. It would include ADH because it increases water to increase blood volume. Angiotensin II, which is a vasoconstrictor. So all three of those increase blood pressure. The one that decreases blood pressure is this one down here on the slide, atrial natriuretic peptide. And it's secreted directly by the atrial cells in the heart. So when we look at this mechanism for controlling aldosterone and look a little more closely at this chart, we can see that the primary regulators are the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, the concentration of potassium, and other factors would be ACTH, and then also ANP, which is the one that um, is released to lower blood pressure. So in all these case, in the first case, we see that decreased blood pressure causes renin to be released, formation of angiotensin II, which increases blood pressure because it's a vasoconstrictor, that leads to aldosterone release, and that reabsorbs sodium, thus increasing blood volume and increasing blood pressure. If the potassium levels are high in the blood, this is going to then require more sodium to go into the blood, so aldosterone is directly released. It bypasses the renin angiotensin system, and we have the same pathway. The other factors would be the ACTH, so this is the traditional hormonal pathway. CRH causes the anterior pituitary to release ACTH, leading to aldosterone and so on, and also released um, from the posterior pituitary gland is ADH, causes reabsorption of water, and that does the same thing here to increase blood volume and also blood pressure. Now, if there's high blood pressure going into the heart, the heart can increase the release of atrial natriuretic peptide, and that inhibits the effect of aldosterone, as you can see shown on this image here. So the clinical imbalance that occurs that's related to these is, first of all, aldosteronism. That would be hypersecretion due to adrenal tumors. So we would expect more sodium in the blood and much higher blood pressure. So that results in hypertension and also the over excretion of potassium.